Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I want to welcome everybody out to Three Angels Fellowship. Uh, I want to welcome everybody out that's listening and watching online. Uh, to, right now is the uh, Sabbath school portion of our service. Uh, so we'll jump right into this. Um, we are on lesson number 11, and the title is The Second Angel's Message, The Fall of Babylon. Uh, so what we'd like to do this morning is try to uh, look at some things in literal Babylon and tie and connect that to uh, the things in our history and tie that into modern Babylon. But before we do that, let's have a word of prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to ask the Holy Spirit to come and tabernacle with us. <sighs> Heavenly Father, thank you first and foremost for giving us another day, keeping us amongst the land of the living. We thank you so much for all you do, Lord. You've been so good to us, so kind. Thank you for getting us through another week. Uh, thank you for just the opportunity to be able to know truth and so that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, we first and foremost ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. Forgive those who sinned against us. Forgive us who we have sinned against. Please allow us not to have any unconfessed sins on the open books that are in heaven. Lord, so right now as we prepare to open up thy word, uh, pour out thy spirit amongst us and open up our understanding. Give us clarity and plainness in thy word so we may be able to understand these things uh, so that the, your, your word can transform our lives, develop our character, and cultivate our faith. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. So, once again, the title of this study this morning is The Second Angel's Message, The Fall of Babylon. So, Let's read the member read. Matter of fact, uh, let's, let me read something real quick. Let me read a quotation by Sister White. Uh, just a short, quick, brief statement. Now, we know that as students of prophecy, we understand that the second angel's message in Revelation 4. Let's, let's turn there first. Let's go to Revelation 14, verse 8. Revelations 14, verse 8. Let's take a look at that text first. And it's the second angel's message. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to tie in some things in literal Babylon to modern Babylon and see how there is a progressive uh, fall. Okay? So let's take a look at Revelations 14, and we'll look at verse 8. Okay? Matter of fact, forgive me, let's, let's jump up to verse 7. 7 and 8. Let's look at verses 7 and 8. Okay? I'm reading. It says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heavens and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Let me pause here. When we, look, when we take a look at uh, the first angel. The first angel says, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. We understand that that's the first angel. And what it's, what's taking place in that text, it's given us a description of what's going to take place in the other angels. So we know that fear God, that's the first part of it. Giving glory to him is the second angel's message. And the third angel's message it talks about the judgment, okay? So let's just, let's read, let's read uh, verse 8. It says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So when we take a look at Babylon, if we could connect that to one of the phrases in the first angel's message, when it says, fear God, give glory to him, the reason why Babylon fell is because they did not give glory to God. That happened in literal Babylon, and that's going to happen at the end of the world. But 
So let me read this quick statement by Sister White. This is coming out of manuscripts number 16 and 1890. And she's going to explain to us real briefly what giving glory to God means, what a definition of giving glory to God. Uh, it says, giving glory to God. To give glory to God is to reveal his character in our own and thus make him known. And in whatever way we may make known the Father or the Son, we glorify God. So when we take a look at uh, giving glory to God, that's the character. That's where an individual was converted. And when you tie that into the sanctuary, if you take a look at fear God, that's the courtyard. When you take a look at giving glory to him, or de the character is developing, that's in the holy place. That's the sanctification process. And we obviously know what the, where the judgment takes place in the most holy place. So let's go back to the study. I just wanted to read that. Let's go back to the study and let's look at our memory text. Our memory text is going to be found in Jeremiah 51, verse, <laughs> verse 9. Okay. Let's, uh, we'll read. If, if anybody wants to read that, just raise your hand and we'll get the mic over to you. Okay. But I'll read it. Okay, it says, Jeremiah 51, verse 9. Hey, I'm reading. It says, We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgments reached unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. Now, that's literal Babylon. Let's connect this text to modern day Babylon. Let's go to Revelations 18. Let's go to Revelations 18. Okay. A lot of these texts are popular texts, but we, make, we need to make sure that we continue to go over it over and over them again so they can be fresh in our memory bank. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at We'll look at, we'll read verses 4 to 6. And remember, literal Babylon said th that their sins had reached up into the skies. Okay, Revelations 18, verse 4. Okay, we want to concentrate on verse 5, but we just want to give a little context when we read verse 4. Because verse 4 is, t he's telling his people to come out of her. Amen? Okay, so it says, and I heard another, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Verse 5 says, For her sins have reached unto heaven. We just seen in Jeremiah 51, verse 9, that Babylon's sins has reached the sky. And it says, I'll, re I'll start over. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she has filled, filled uh, to her double. Okay, so there, her, Babylon's iniquities has reached unto heaven. Let's look at another text. Let's go to a, a people that sins, they filled up their cup as well. Let's go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. And we'll look at verses 31 and 33. Matthew 23. And we'll look at verses 31 to 33. Now this is, this is talking about ancient Israel. This is the Jews. Okay. Let's see what the Bible says about them. That they f were, were, were their sins filled up. Okay. Or have reached unto heaven. Okay. Matthew 23, 31 to 33. I'm reading. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Verse 32 says, fill ye up then the measure of your father. This means fill up the iniquities. Okay. Verse 33 says, ye, ye serpents, ye generations of vipers, how can ye 
uh, escape the damnation of hell. So we see that Bab uh, Israel's sins has reached out to heaven because they did not give glory to God. They, they weren't converted. They wanted to go their own way. Okay. So let's look at uh, question number one. It says, what, consti what constitutes modern Babylon? I'm going to read note one. What constitutes modern Babylon? Some of these notes are pretty lengthy, so I won't read all of them. I just might read a portion of it. But this one, we, we, I can read all of it. It says, Babylon means confusion. The term originated at the time of the building of the Tower of Babel, when the language of mankind was confounded. This is very important. Babylon stands not only for confusion, but for self-exaltation and all the spirit of the world. As old Chaldean led in perverting God's truth, nearly all the false doctrines that have cursed the world have their roots in Babylon of old. The papacy succeeded to the place of the old Chaldean as the power ruling over the minds of men, and through it, human tradition and the spirit of exaltation have permeated Christianity, Christendom. Modern Babylon sums up the whole spirit of worldliness, carnality, and the substitution of man's way for God's way that today is found in the world out of this the Lord calls his people. So it's very important that we recognize that when the Bible talks of the three angels' messages that we have, we, we are supposed to fear God and give glory to him. But we can't fear God if the Holy Spirit is not abiding in us. That's the only thing that we have as our will, a choice to open up our heart and, lest it, and let this truth transform and develop our character. Amen. So let's go to uh, number two. Number two says, what is the inevitable result of reject, rejecting light? Let's take a look at John 12. Verse 35. John 12, verse 35. Okay. John 12, 35. Oh, you yeah, got, got somebody to read that. John 12, 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while, while is the light with you, walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, so this light is the gospel. This light is the commandments. Let's take out a few texts. Let's go to a very popular text. Let's go to Psalms 119. Let's go to Psalms 119, 105. Uh, in light of what we're speaking of, in terms of Remember how you fall into Babylon, how you fall into the way of the world, how you fall into Satan's way is by rejecting truth. That's one aspect of that. Okay? 119, 105. I'm going to flip around a little bit this morning. <laughs> 119, 105. It says, Thy word is a what? Lamp unto my feet. And a what? Light unto my path. Oh, okay. So we see how the word is a lamp unto the feet and a light unto the path. This is the thing that, uh, this is what, when we receive this light in our life, this is the light, this is the righteousness of Christ that comes into the life. So now, when we deal with certain situations, we are operating under the dictates and guides of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go to one more text, and then I'll get this comment. Let's go to one more text. Let's go to Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs 6.23. And let's see. Uh, let's see what Proverbs 6.23 says. Okay. And then we'll get Brother Cargill's comment. Proverbs 6.23.
Okay, so it says, we know that, just to recap, we know that when you fall into Babylon, when you fall into the ways of Babylon, you are rejecting light. That's one aspect of that. Okay, you're rejecting this marvelous light that he gives to us. Okay, let's read Proverbs 6, 23. It says, for the commandments is a lamp, and the law is a what? Light, light and the reproof of instructions are the ways of life. So we see the commandments uh, being light. We have a comment. Go ahead, Brother Cargo. I was just going to share, you know, from that. We won't share all of it, but um, as, you know, the result of rejecting light mm -hmm. is that is a moral fall mm -hmm. into darkness and error. Amen. You know, as it, um, boy, it was brought out in last week's lesson, the message of Revelation 14 is a gathering into one great system of truth, all the light of past ages. It was also noted that the great testing truth of this message is the fourth commandment of the Decalogue. Therefore, the fall of Babylon must be a fall from the principles and teaching of that law, not from the outward formal recognition of the law merely, but from the living principle, a law in Christ Jesus within the heart. You know, the um, first angel's message of Revelation 14 announcing the hour of God's judgment, calling upon men to fear and worship him, was designed to separate the first people of God from corrupting influences of the world to rouse them to see their condition of worldliness and backsliding. In this message, um, God has sent to the church a warning which, had it been accepted, would have corrected the evils that were shutting them out away from him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, got a comment right here, brother, brother, brother Bowman. Yeah, I was just adding just to the practicality of, of light, you know, just to add more to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you put a, a, a plant mm -hmm. in a dark room, right. it's going to die. Amen. You know I mean, if it's Amen. outside getting light, it's going to thrive. Amen. You know what I mean? So Amen. you see that this light, if we're without it, you're in darkness. That's right. You don't know where you go with. There's a lot of practicality there. You can, you know, knowledge, there's direction, understanding, mm -hmm. and just on a simple level, just being able to live, being able Amen. to continue. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Just to piggyback on my brother's comment, uh, let's go to a text. Let's go to 1 Peter, and let's take a look at chapter 2, and we'll look at verse 9. So we'll go to 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9, just to piggyback on this uh, light that the Lord gives us and how he connects these things to spiritual things in the, in the character, okay, and how we live, okay? So, now remember, always keep this in your mind. If you reject this light, you're in darkness, like Brother Bowman was just saying. If you reject this light, you're in darkness. And remember, everything that we do, practical or spiritual, it's progressive. Things just do not happen overnight. If you continue to sin and spiral out of control, it's progressive. Just like if you are giving your life to Christ and you're growing in Christ, that's progressive. What direction are you going to take? Okay, so let's go to 1 Peter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. It says, but ye are a what? Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of what? darkness into his what into his marvelous light we can't do anything okay we can't do anything the only thing that we can do is to choose to accept this light amen okay so let's look at number three let's go to number three in these quarterly number three says into what pathway will the Lord guide his people? And we want to take a look at Isaiah 35, verse 8. <laughs> Isaiah 35, verse 8. Isaiah 35, verse 8. And if somebody can get Psalms 119, verse 1, 
after we read these two texts, Psalms 35, verse 8 and 10, then we'll go to Psalms 119, verse 1. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to read uh, Isaiah 35, verses 8 and 10, and if somebody can get Psalms 119, verse 1. Okay, Psalms 35, verse 8 says, And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Let me pause. Now, an individual that receives this light, okay, when we take a look at giving glory to God, let, let's just tie this into the sanctuary real, real quick. We have the courtyard that say fear God. We have the holy place that's giving glory to him. And we have the most holy place for the hour of his judgment has come. When an individual comes to Christ, then when they are going through the sanctification process, this right here says the way of holiness. When you are going through the sanctification process, you are becoming holy. You are set, you are set aside for a holy purpose. So that's where the character and all of the things are developed. Like Sister White says, the uh, sanctification is the work of a lifetime. Amen. So it says, the way of holiness, the unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the warefaring men, who fools shall no, not err therein. Verse 10 says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Okay, so we see how... If an individual comes to Christ, if he's developed and if he is fortified in Christ, that individual now will be led to do the things that the Holy Spirit wants him to do. They will give their life up. Flesh will be subdued. That's something that we all need to make sure that we recognize. We need to understand, well, in my life, in my character, what's something that I need to work on? Day in and day out, we've been talking about self-examination. Uh, you, you, you having a stern self-examination on yourself, on your life. Like Pastor Sankey was saying last week, we all know what we're doing. We all know what we need work on. But we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest. If we're honest with ourselves, we can be honest with Christ. If we're trying to deceive ourselves and say, oh, I'm not this way, or and I'm not that way, you are rejecting that light. And if you are rejecting that light, what you should start recognizing is, well, when I get myself in these situations, why do I always do the things that, not, that the Lord does not want me to do? It's because you're trying to do these things in your own strength. We've all been there. And we need to learn how to let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. That's very important because... All the other things mean, don't mean anything if we don't do that. That's fearing God. Amen? That's the first angel. Okay, so let's, uh, did somebody, Psalms 119 verse 1? Yeah, I, I'll because, read it. Go ahead, brother. Psalms 119 verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. That's very important. That's very important. Uh, that is his way. That's the way that he wants to lead his people by keeping his commandments. Now, the Holy Spirit needs to lead us to and give us strength to keep the commandments. We cannot do that on our own. Okay? It's only through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So I, now, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead sorry, I just wanted to mention that um, the word in that verse, undefiled, mm -hmm. actually can represent being perfect. Amen. So Amen. when it says blessed are the undefiled in the way, it's, it's basically saying blessed are the perfect. Mm -hmm. But then the second half of the verse gives the reason why they are Amen. perfect. It says Amen. who walk in the law of Amen. the Lord. Amen. So um, you. as we, as you were mentioning, our lifestyle is, plays a big role in being undefiled. Amen. Um, the law is one of the reasons why we are perfect, but right. we have to continue to walk in the law in Amen. order to remain perfect. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Profound, profound. So let's, uh, let's go to number four. We'll skip the note. You can read the note three on your own time. Let's go to number four. Now it says, in what way 
will the spirit of the world be leading men into lawlessness? And then shall be revealed the lawless one, whom the Lord Jesus shall slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to naught by the manifestations of his coming. Now, when we, when we talk about the lawless one, some might will say, well, that's Satan. Well, it's not so much talking about that, the context, it's talking about the papacy. Let's take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Okay. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Okay. Now let's read, uh, read that. Oh, we have, we have somebody to read that. Even as you were um, bringing out, you know, about the importance of the way of God, uh, my comment is, you know, um, it's in the, the, the way of God is, you know, it's all being expressed through the, the, through the, through different uh, prophets have mm -hmm. spoken about Amen. the way. Amen. And um, we know this is again referring back to the Ten Commandments. Amen. Um, and, um, you know, when it speaks um, in Psalms 119, verse 3, it talks about they also do, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. Be walking in the ways of God, walking in his commandments. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. Again, it, again the psalmist is bringing that out again in Psalms 19, 1927. Then um, I will run in the way. Um, um, also, it's, it's also shown, um, um, I'll run in the way of thy commandments. Uh, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Make, the, make me to go in the paths of thy commandments. Mm -hmm. All of these are, are showing us that uh, it is important to understand the way of God and to walk in his Amen. ways. And Amen. so I just wanted to make that comment and... Um, um, the last thing I'll say, um, Isaiah 28, verse 7 says, But they also um, have erred through wine, through strong drink, are, and are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through mm -hmm. strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. And so we see false doctrines, false teachings, uh, erring in vision. That's right. Uh, lead you out of the way. That's right. Out of the way of light. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Just to piggyback on, on Brother Corrigal's comment, hold your finger in 2 Thessalonians 2 a. Go to Proverbs 8. Go to Proverbs 8. And let's look at verse 20. Proverbs 8, and let's look at verse 20. So, like Brother Corrigal just mentioned, if we do not choose his way, then we're going to choose our way. It, it's very simple. It's very cut and dry. If we do not choose his way, we're going to choose our way. And if we choose our way, we're pretty much rejecting light. Okay? But let's look at Proverbs 8.20, and he's going to tell you the way that he leads. Okay? Proverbs 8.20. I'm there. It says, I is talking, this is Christ speaking. Okay, and you could go through the, the, you could read through the rest of the chapter, and it's just talking about, this is Christ. It says, I lead in the way of what? Righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. When you see this text, when you see this word judgment, this is not so much talking about the judgment that's taking place in heaven right now. This is the judgment of decision making. Let's take a look at the text. He says, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment. So no matter what you're going through, if you follow my lead, I'll lead you in the correct way. No matter what you're going through, I will lead you in the correct way. But if we choose to fall off to the right or fall off to the left, we're going our own way. Amen? Okay, so let's go back over to 2 Thessalonians 2.8. 
Now, it says, it says here, it says, uh, it says, this is the, okay, it's 2 Thessalonians 2.8. It says, and then shall the, that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and, do, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The wicked won't be able to see him. They won't be able to withstand that light. Okay? But if we are children of light, we'll be able to e receive that. And we're waiting for him. And we're waiting for that. If you jump up, I'm not going to read the text, but if you jump up to verses 3 and 4, it's talking about the papacy. And if you look at v verse 3, the very first part of verse 3, it says, let no man deceive you by any means. Because right now there is a popular uh, a popular doctrine, which is once saved, always saved, meaning I can get baptized. All I have to do is believe in Christ. I can get baptized and I can come up and I can still live the same way that I lived before I went down into the water. That's that's the era. That's the mindset. That's the way of the world. OK. And the Bible says that Satan is going to deceive the whole world. And I got to say this, we need to be careful that we don't get caught up into that. Not so much with uh, just living anyway, we need to be careful that we don't get caught up into all of the precious truths that we have, that we place all of these reforms in front of Christ, in front of the Holy Spirit. In front of the Holy Spirit, allowing us to make sure that we are surrendered to Christ. And when we are surrendered to Christ, now all of the reforms, they're a byproduct of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, uh, let's go to number five here. Let's go to number five. Number five says, when is the law of God to be sealed amongst his disciples? Okay, let's go to Isaiah 8. Let's go to Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8, and we'll look at verses 16 and 17. Okay. Okay. All righty. I'm there. You guys there? I'm here. It says, Isaiah 8, 16 and 17. I'll read the question again. When is the law of God to be sealed amongst his disciples? That's a very interesting word. Disciples. It says, Bind up the testimonies and seal the law amongst my who? Disciples. Verse 17. And I will what? Wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob and I will look for him. So when is the law supposed to be sealed? While we're waiting for the law. Drop down to verse 20. Drop down to verse 20. Drop down to verse 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because they have no light in them. If you reject this light, do you have it? You can't have it. Now jump back up to verse 16. It says, bind up the, the testimonies and seal the law amongst my disciples. Let's go to another text. Let's go to John 8, 31. Let's go to John 8, 31. John 8.31. Let's go to John 8.31. Okay. All of these things in the Bible is connected. When we fear God and give glory to him, now when, we come, when our names come up in the judgment, our sins can be blotted out. Okay. All these things connect. So John 8.31 and 32. We're going to look at John 8.31 and 32. These are very popular texts. Okay, John 8, 31 and 32. Now, it said, it said um, in Isaiah, it said, uh, sealed up the, 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 bind up the testimonies and seal the law amongst my disciples. Verse 31 says, of John 8 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Let me pause. A lot of the Jews didn't believe him. They rejected the light, right? This says the ones that believed on him, okay? It says, I'll start over, it says, Then said the Jews 
to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my what? Word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Okay? We have to stay in this Bible. We have to stay in the gospel. Verse 32 says, and if we stay in the Bible, if we continue in his word, this is what verse 32 says, and ye shall know the what? Truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Okay? What understanding do you have by knowing the truth? Let's go to Job 28, 28. Go to Job 28, 28. By understanding the truth, Job 28 uh, explained to us what we will do if we understand the truth and stay in his word. Okay? Job 28, 28. Okay, Job 28, 28, and I'm there, and I'm reading, and it says, And unto men he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is what? That's wisdom. And to depart from evil is what? This is what you understand when you understand the truth. When we talked about the uh, someone that has the mindset of once saved, always saved, they don't have that. They continue to stay and going their own way because of the false doctrines, because of the belief system of Babylon. Amen? Okay, so let's go to, we're going to, let's jump to number six. Let's jump to number six. It says, what is the Advent message to accomplish? And we want to go to Isaiah 40. 3 and 4. Isaiah 40, 3 and 4. Okay. Isaiah 3 and 4. We'll try to maybe finish a lot of this out right here. Okay. Isaiah ch chapter 40 and verses 3 and 4. And we have a reader here. Isaiah 40, verse 3 and 4. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted in every mountain, and hills shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So this is speaking of John the Baptist. Okay? This is speaking of John the Baptist. He made straight the way and was getting people to come to Christ so when Christ would come, they would receive that light. Okay? They would receive that light. Let's go to another text. Let's go to Isaiah 62, verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 62, verses 10 and 11. This is where all the instructions are. This is where all the answers is in the Bible. Okay? We have a hard, all of us, I'm, talk, I'm speaking to me. We have a hard time of letting go and letting the Lord have his way with us. We like to hold on too tight. Amen? But the Holy Spirit would come in and give us power to let go. That's the only way we're going to be able to get to heaven. We're not going to be able to get to heaven any other way. When we come to the crisis, if we continuously stay in our own way, when the crisis comes, sooner or later... Sooner or later, we're going to give in because that's flesh. Amen? Okay, so let's go to Isaiah 62, verses 10 and 11. Okay, now, it says, go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highways. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed it to the ends of the world. Say ye to the daughters of Zion, Behold, thou salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with me and his works before him. That's a very jam-packed text. Let's, let's deal with verse 10. Verse 10 says, go through, go through. Then it says, cast up, cast up. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about any time you see a doubling in the Bible like that, it's representing the Second angel's message and the fourth angel's message. The second angel's message says, 
Babylon, it's fallen, it's fallen, okay? That's what's representing the doubling there, okay? So it says, go through, go through the gates, uh, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, or another word for that, build up, or build up the highway. We talked about the way of holiness. There's a highway there, okay, that we need to be building up for the people, okay? And so what we want to look at is we want to look at another text, uh, but before we go to this, we're going to go to Isaiah 57, verse 14, but let's get Brother Com Cargill's comment. Go ahead, brother. No, this is, um, again, as John the Baptist, Isaiah, um, we see um, it's, it's going to be those who are given that message are going to be lifting up that standard, you know. Amen. You know, speaking of um, casting up, casting up, casting up the highway, this is the, the work of Elijah, the third Elijah. That's right. God is calling us to be those who will lift up the standard, That's which right. is going to be proclaiming Amen. again these messages Amen. for these last days. Amen. And, um, you know, in verse, verse 12 also says in, in Isaiah 42, Isaiah 62 rather, verse 12 also says, and they shall call them the holy people, mm -hmm. the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out a city, not mm -hmm. forsaken. Amen. And Amen. So you see, God is calling his people at the That's end right. of time Amen. to lift up the standard. Amen. To e exalt the, the three hundred message and to call people out of that fallen system Amen. into the marvelous light of the, the glorious Amen. gospel. Amen. Thank you, brother. Um, so this is us. We are the ones, we are giving this message in the spirit of John the Baptist and Elijah, okay? So when it talks about us building up or building up or cast up, cast up the highways, that's us. We need to give this final message to the world. But how can we give it? The only way we can give it is if we are surrendered to Christ, if we're in our Bible, if we know how to deal with adversity, uh, being a fit, all these different things. If we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and give us peace in those situations, now we can give this final warning message. Uh, do we have a comment? Go ahead. You have a comment? Okay, sorry. Let's go to Isaiah 57, verse 14. Let's go to Isaiah 57, verse 14. And let's piggyback on Isaiah 62, verse 10. Okay? Like Brother Cargill said, we need to give this final warning message. This is our duty. This is our responsibility. Okay, just like ancient Israel. All right? So let's look at Isaiah 57, verse 14. It says, and shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up. Now, what is it referring to? It's referring to the second angel's message and the fourth angel's message. Okay? Then it says, uh, I'll start over. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Well, what is the stumbling block out of the way of his people? Let's go to chapter 58 and let's go to verses 12 to 14. Okay? Write the next chapter over. Okay? All right. Now, it says, chapter 58 of Isaiah verses 12 we'll just read verse we'll just read verses 12 and 13 it says we're trying to find out what the stumbling block is it says amen and they that shall be of these shall what build cast up they're casting up or they're building and it said the old waste places it says thou shall raise up the foundation of many generations this is the this is what what brother Cargill was speaking of that ensign that's being lifted up amen it's a character that's being lifted up but it's only by this light that we can give it it's I'll read it over it says and they shall and and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places thou shall raise up the foundation of many generations and thou shall be called the what repairs of the breach the restores of path to dwell in. What's the breach that mankind is not keeping? It's the what? It's the Sabbath command. Because in the Sabbath command, it's telling you 
who the true God is. And if I'm worshiping on the spurious Sabbath, am I worshiping the true God? But that is the mindset and the belief system of modern Babylon. And our job is to get in this Bible, to learn this message, let this message engross the mind so we can get out there to give the final warning. Amen. Let's read verse 13 just to validate what is the breach. Okay. This is validating what the breach is. It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the what? This is very important. Let me read. Let me, let me pause here. This is very important. A lot of times when you see in the Bible and you see the word Sabbath, it's plural. Hold your finger right here. Go to Ezekiel 20. Go to Ezekiel 20. Go to Ezekiel 20. And we're going to get right back to that. But go to Ezekiel 20. I just want to read one quick verse in Ezekiel 20, and it's verse 12. And we know the text, but I want to kind of make a point. And then we'll get right back over to Isaiah 58, verse 13. Okay. Okay, it says, Ezekiel 20, verse 12, it says, Moreover, also I gave them my what? Is this plural or singular? This is plural. So a lot of people get tripped up on this when they see the word Sabbath. And all this is saying is that he gave them Sabbath, all the feast days, the unleavened bread, the feast of trumpets, and all, all these different things. He gave that to them so they would know that he is the one that sanctifies them, right? But if we go back to Isaiah 58, verse 13, let's look at that there. Go back to Isaiah 58, 13. It says, if thou turn away thy foot from the what? The Sabbath. The Sabbath. The seventh day of the week, right? Let's read it. It says, if thou turn thy foot, okay, if thou uh, turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day. Because see, the feast days came on dates. The seven-day Sabbath comes on a day, every seventh day of the week. Amen? It says, if I, if I turn my foot away from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasures, nor speaking thy own words. Verse 14 then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride up on the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy fathers, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is why it's so important that we recognize that if we receive this light, understand these messages, understand the histories behind our movement. Understand what's taking place. He'll give you light. We have all this material, all this accumulated light we have, and we can give that to the world. But we have to be able to give this to the world in a way that they're able to receive it. Sometimes when you're cutting spiritual things against carnal things, I don't care if people do see the truth. They're not going to accept it. That's just, that's just how human beings are. But if we do it in kindness and love and not condemn anybody, now they will have, we will build credit up with people. Now we can give this message to the people. Because Babylon, the belief system of Babylon is to be able to live the way that you want to live. To be able to just, when somebody says something to you, you say something back. That's the way, the, that's what pleases the flesh. And the papacy is deceiving the whole world with that. We get deceived at times with that. So uh, let's go to, uh, let's, what number, we're, let's see, they're going to drop down. Matter of fact, let's go, to, let's go to number eight. Let's go, number eight says. Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me sis. I know you read that verse in um, Isaiah 57. About, in reference to the stumbling block? Yes, ma'am. So, I'm not quite clear. Okay. Um, is the stumbling block because they were not upholding the law? Is that the reason for it being the stumbling block? Well, because the there are other places where you read that Christ 
is uh, the stone and they were right. stumbled over it. Oh, I, I see so what you're saying. I see what um, you're saying. I'm not sure. Right. Maybe I'm, right. I'm not understanding clearly. In, 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 in the context of this, when it's talking about the stumbling block, it's not talking about the stone of Christ being the rock. It's the stumbling block of, of unbelief, of error, of tradition, of going your own way, you believing that whatever I do, that's the way that I should do it. It's not so much talking about the stumbling block of Christ. We know that Christ is the rock of ages. We know that he is the stone that's going to smite the image on the feet. It's not talking about that, that stumbling, not that stone. We're talking about the stumbling block. Okay, so uh, go ahead. She got, she got another comment. Got another comment. I'll, go ahead. I'll just go ahead, brother. To, go ahead, brother. To um, kind of clarify on that, um, the stumbling block simply represents sin. That's amen. And we can there go to uh, Ezekiel is. chapter fourteen. Let's go there. Just to Let's touch on that and clarify what the stumbling block is. Let's go there. Um, God does say that He wants us as a people to remove the stumbling block. Mm -hmm. Um, and it go in Ezekiel 14 verse, um, we can begin in verse two. Okay. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling Amen. block of their iniquity Amen. before their face. Should Amen. I be inquired of at all by them? And it says, therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols mm -hmm. in his heart and mm -hmm. putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity mm -hmm. before his face mm -hmm. and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Amen. So Amen. when God is mentioning uh, casting away the stumbling block right. as a people, right. he's basic, basically telling us our work um, since we're called to be the third Elijah. Amen. Amen. Elijah came to remove the false worship. Right. Um, and since we're supposed to be the third Elijah, right. our work is to remove the idols from right. not only ourselves, but the world. Amen. And be Amen. an example of that. Amen. Thank you. Sister, Sister Be Beverly had a comment. I think, that, I think he clarified it already. Right. But right. I, I was just thinking that they were not upholding the law, so therefore they were the stumbling block in, in the sight of the other people. Okay, so I'll I see what you're saying. One. Good point, good point. But, but, also, but, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, brother. Also, Christ is, was to be sin for us, so that's right. just another witness right. that it Amen. basically represents Amen. sin, Amen. since Christ was called the stumbling block. Okay, um, beautiful. Thank you, brother. We have a comment. I have a question, go actually. Ahead. So if we follow the commandment of God verbatim, can we become a stumbling block? Well, I believe, well, let me say this. I think sometimes what we do, what, when I spoke about earlier, when we talk about some of the reforms that we have, some of the reforms that we have, if we are not, uh, Brother Bim says something to me, and if he doesn't mind, can he comment on that if he doesn't mind? But some of the reforms that we have, we like to, come to people and we like to throw those reforms out first before we even talk about Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's the Holy Spirit that is going to give people power in order to get victory over anything that they're doing. So we must make sure that, well, to answer your question, when you say, if we keep the law, can we be a stumbling block? If we keep the law in his righteousness, no, we can't. But if we try to keep it in our own, we can. <laughs> that would be right. Go ahead. Um, you know, as we um, speaking about that stumbling block still, as we, um, Jeremiah, um, also in Jeremiah 18, verse 15. Let's go there. Okay. Um, Jeremiah 18, 15. It says, because my people had forsaken, for, uh, excuse me, because my people had forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity. They have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up. Mm -hmm. So that kind of ties in, you know, with cast up, cast up. Amen. The, the, Amen. the you know, um, the, the, the true paths, the, you know, calling people back to the true paths, right. the ancient paths of old. Amen. And um, also, um, Jeremiah 19, verse 4 and 5, again, it kind of 
enlightened us more to what would, what what was their stumbling on? Mm-hmm. You know, what were they stumbling on? Um, uh, Jeremiah nineteen verse four and five says, "But because they have forsaken me mm-hmm. and have estranged this place and have burnt incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled this place with the blood of innocence." Mm-hmm. They have built up also the high places of Baal mm-hmm. to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded it not, nor spake it. Neither came it into my mind. So Amen. when they started to do all of these abominations, right. that's called the people to stumble and Amen. fall away from the true paths. Amen. Thank you. That, that, that's just the, the, pretty much the basis of this. If you reject his light, if you do not uh, continue to stay in him, abide in Christ, sooner or later you will start drifting off into darkness. Remember earlier I said everything is progressive. Go ahead, sister. No, in, in reference to the question that was asked, um, the law does not save us. It's just a schoolmaster. Okay. So um, the law points, us, points out our sins. So therefore, Amen. when we come to Christ, that is what helps us to make that um, transition amen amen but i i I believe that uh hey we just got to be flat out honest about this thing i mean we we can't we got to be honest about it a lot of us we try to oh they're not keeping the sabbath this and this that and this they're going to hell they might not even know nothing about the sabbath we don't know we need to be kind gent go to the go to galatians 5 go to galatians 5 go to galatians 5 since it was brought up. Let's bring it up. Go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5. We'll look at verse 22. Now an individual that is operating under the fruits of the spirit. These are the attributes that they have. This is how they operate. Okay. This is how they operate. I'm reading. It says. But the fruits of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen? So when we come to people, and people we know, we see what people are doing, even in our, or some of our family members. But how do you come at them? You don't, I mean, sometimes, some of your family members, you can be a little bit more straightforward to somebody that you do not know. But somebody that you do not know, you can't condemn them for what they're doing. What are we doing? We need to get out of that. And we, we really do that because we do have the truth. Sometimes the truth, because we have it, we get to, we get to flip-flop in it. Meaning we need to come with Christ first, with the Holy Spirit, with gentleness and kindness opposed to all the other things. Come with that first, then when you build credit with people, then you can come with all the other things. Amen? Go ahead, we got, we got a comment real quick. Brother Camacho. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, I came back a couple weeks ago from Texas visiting wow. family. Uh, they're non Adventist, but one of my, uh, two of my nieces, I was surprised they grew up in the Pentecostal church. They right. discovered the Sabbath for themselves. Amen. Amen. And so I was surprised, but another one of my cousins was, uh, she kind of went after me and said, uh, you Seventh day Adventists are not very kind because the way she was witness to. So, and I couldn't argue. And I said, if right. we have the truth, then. We have to have the character of Christ, Amen. and so often that's we don't. And that, exactly. And she's more bitter than. Amen. So when I try to explain, it was it was very hard. So I, I'm glad that you're bringing this up because I think right. that's something we need to focus on. Yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. And just in closing, just in closing, uh, a lot of times we are self-deceived, and we believe like because we have the truth and we do this. We dress a certain way, we eat a certain way, that that's going to get us to heaven. It's not. The only thing that's going to get us to heaven is the righteousness of Christ. And if we accept that, if we have that living and abiding in us, now when we go out to somebody else, they'll see love, 
They'll see gentleness and kindness, and they'll be apt to listen to what we're saying to them. Amen? So with that, we'll have a word of prayer if there's no any, close, uh, any closing comments. Thanks for everybody's participation. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us another day. We thank you so much for all you do, Lord. Lord, allow us to make sure that we understand what gets us to heaven, and it's only you, not us. None of the reforms that you have for us, it's only through your, your life and the righteousness that you, you dis displayed on earth. And we can, ex we can uh, buy into that, and we can uh, be in that, and that can be acted out in our life if we accept your light. If we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and cleanse us and develop our character, that's the only way we get to heaven. And we need to understand that. It's a critical time right now, Lord. A lot of us are self-deceiving ourselves to where we will be lost because of we think we got this thing figured out. And we don't. There's nothing we can do but give our life and surrender to you. Please, Lord, give us power and strength. To understand what gets us to heaven and what things that uh, our faith activates your righteousness. So be with us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us. Please, Lord, if my, uh, uh, any of my words or some of my personality, if it offended anybody, please forgive me. Please, Lord. I thank you so much for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.